What's up, YouTube? Chris Chavez here with Kyle Merber, Eric Jenkins. We're kicking things off here at the Sidious Cafe presented by Hoka. The Sidious Cafe was such a hit in Orlando, we had to run it back for Boston Marathon weekend. So we're here at 3, 344 Newbury, right? Is it 334 or 344? 344. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Newbury yeah. Street, it's popping right now. So much happening all throughout the weekend. We kicked things off with a group run yesterday. We've got a preview show. We're going to be going for the next hour or so, previewing all the top storylines for the Boston Marathon. We've got Evans Chabet running, Helen O'Beary, Sarah Hall, Des Linden, Sharon Lochetti. I mean, the list goes on. Emma Bates. Like, everyone is here, uh, except for the top Americans who competed at the U.S. Olympic Marathon trials. But regardless, we're in for some great races on Monday. Kyle, what are you looking forward to the most of just, like, taking in Boston Marathon yeah, weekend? Let's talk just bo – if you're the Boston Marathon PR team, oh, like, man. you're working through the night right now. just seems like one crisis after another ever since last year. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, look, the medals. What do we think? Like, let's start at the top. What do we think of the medals? Okay, the medals, big topic of conversation – People outraged because the Bank of America logo is a little too big on the medals. Just willing to get angry about anything. So there's that controversy. We had the Tracksmith singlet thing last year. Yeah. We've got the BAA hasn't paid out prize money to the winner of the 2014 Boston Marathon because the, the first winner got popped for EPO. So they owe $100,000 to Bazunish Deba. So there's that. There's... People bickering online about influencers In, getting bibs for right. for the Boston so Marathon. You've done, I, they have a thing now oh boy. that hey, is on going? the wall by the finish, right? They have all the no, six no, star. At the expo, yeah, yeah. At the expo, all the six star finishers. Your name's up there. Yeah. You accepted some, some right, influencer so the, bibs before. The Chris, how does I that feel? A, yeah, so I am a six star finisher, not to brag. Uh, <laughs> but I never qualified for Boston until I ran Houston in January. So in 2016, when I ran it, it was with another brand, and I got a bib, and so that was the first time I ever ran Boston. But since then, and yeah. since checking off the six stars, uh, I've made it a personal goal that I won't ever run Boston until I qualify again, and I qualified. So I've got a BQ in my pocket and a six-star medal, but how do I feel about taking an influencer bib? I mean, it's nothing new. It's been happening for years. Give the influencers bibs. <laughs> well, I think like something that we need to realize is people might not know about the Boston Marathon if we didn't have influencers telling us about it. Yeah, I think like, that's how I found <laughs> out yeah. about it. Like, yeah. We might not like it. Might not get any press. So, um, I mean, no, how many influencers are getting bibs? <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't know if there's an exact number out the there. Now there's people. Run. There's people who say we should have a separate BQ for the influencers. Yeah, like, what's the? Th so you it's need like to hit, forty-five you, minutes slower, and you need to hit a certain follower threshold. For every thousand Instagram followers, you're allowed one minute slower than you would otherwise need in order to qualify. Yeah. Um, so there's that controversy. So, I mean, it just seems like Boston, the Boston Marathon could be like the NBA, where there's always a storyline that's happening, no matter if it's the off season. There is. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, diving into the Boston uh, scene right now. Yeah. Had a group run yesterday. People are, like, you know, really coming into town now this morning. Yeah. People, the Fly Lab popping off right I now. I was getting passed left and right. And I'm just thinking that on Saturday, you should be saving it a little bit. On the easy run? Yeah. I was getting, people are flying by me. Because, I mean, the race is technically not until Monday. So, yeah. you, I guess, we could recover from this one. I don't understand if people <laughs> are, like... Doing a last threshold workout. Was, I think they're just doing strides. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were kind of dogging it. It seems like <laughs> they should be... They, I think they'll be all right. All right, so people are wondering. Health update on Eric Jenkins. Didn't run in Orlando when we had a group run there. Yeah. Calves but, were hurting. But you're back. I'm back. I'm back and running. Um, and by running, I mean like a few times a week. Yeah. Just getting out there. Um, but yeah, healthy, healthy enough to do the group run. Blast. Had a great time. Um... Kind of leading up front, um, setting the tone for the run. Um, me and Mac, side by side like the good old days. Um, great time. Great time. So big picture this weekend. Mm -hmm. Boston, we are always talking about the weather coming in. Yeah. It's looking like good conditions. Which kind of bothers me because I feel like the entire idea of the Boston Marathon is we don't have pacers and therefore you should just race. 
and it's not supposed to be a fast course. It's one of the harder ones on the calendar, and yet we come here and all we talk about is, oh, it's good weather, it might be fast, it might get a tailwind. But that's the whole interesting thing about Boston, it's just like, because of the nature of the course, it's challenging, but then at the same time can be fast from time, if you catch a good tailwind, I mean, the famous 2000, uh, was it 11 year with Must Ryan not be Hall. that famous. And, uh, yeah, right, <laughs> where, where they ran 203, and so, I mean, I, I think if you are fit, Monday's looking good in the forecast. That well, you could see some, some. It favors the people who've run fast, but I think at the end of the day, it, times and PRs you can throw out the window when it comes to racing on Monday. This is kind of an interesting field this year because I feel like the the amount that we've thrown out the best field ever the last few years, whether regardless of the major, but you know it's definitely in Boston the last couple, we're arguably the best Boston fields of all time. Yeah. Where are we rating this year? Because from an American perspective, yeah. we're missing a lot yeah. of people coming off of the trial. So no one who made the Olympic team is here. But we do have some fourth and fifth place finishers, sixth mm -hmm. place finishers here from the U.S. trial. So depth-wise, what do we think of the field? I mean, yeah, it, it, it's, it would obviously be fun to see more of the top Americans out, but... For, just on a whole on the international scene, it's, it's pretty stacked up front. Um, the women's race is, um, is really stacked, I think. How many um, people under? I think it was 19 women under 223, and that's not including Helen. O'Beary and... Uh, and Sharon. Sharon Lochetti. Yeah. yeah. So two ma major winners not included in that depth chart. But I don't, like, from a, an American perspective turning around so quickly after the Olympic trial. So we've got Elkana Kabet. Yeah, who finished we, fourth. We've got Sarah Hall. We've got finished Caroline fifth. Rotich. We've got CJ Albertson. Yeah. So all these athletes who just ran pretty well. Yeah. The trials, albeit not on the team, but still ran very strong races. It's been two months? Yeah. Two and a half? Yeah. Two months. So yeah. I don't know. Like, Eric, are, are you looking at that as – we know they're fit because they were fit two and a half months ago, or is it? Yeah, I what are think we gonna get? It is. I, it see. It seems like a tough turnaround, for sure. But I, I think if you maybe were disappointed in the trials, you can use that as you know you're you're fit and you want to get get out there and pr show that you're fit, and so you you might be kind of using that as, as fuel to to motivate you and 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 run and perform here, but. You know, the, the merit, it seems like it probably is a, a tough turnaround. I'm excited to see Emma Bates run. Yeah. Um, She's the exception to the whole thing because yes. she was injured, had yeah. to scratch from the trials. So the way, when I was talking to Matt McDonald yesterday, the way he said he was like, I was unbelievably fit for the U.S. Olympic marathon trials. And I was like, well, what does that mean? And then he like ran through like his buildup and his, and his workouts and he had a solid day, not the best day at the marathon trials. And he said, but then you have to kind of switch gears and train for Boston, which means it's just like, all right, you rely on all that speed work you did for a flat course in Orlando. Now you just got to do- Love the relativity of speed work. Yeah, and then after that, it's just all hills. You just attack hills and it, it, we'll see how it all pans out. But I mean, someone like him is, he, he could be like a, Dark Horse to mix it up. It's such an interesting, like, I think in general, because of the lack of how many Americans are in the race, the pacing is going to be so interesting because it's like if the East Africans break off, what do the rest of the Americans do? Yeah, normally you have a bigger second pack of Americans. You, you have people queuing off of Scott Fobble, basically. And, yeah, yeah, and we're not necessarily going to have that as much. Now, the Americans that are here probably got really good appearance fees. Yeah. You didn't have to fight with... As many people. As many people in order to get that. So I, I respect the, the quick turnaround from a financial perspective. You obviously just got to, you know, missed out on making a really nice splash. Um, but, no, I, I think 10 weeks in the old shoes would have been an issue. Yeah. Interesting it point, It always yeah. comes back to the shoes. It always comes back to the shoes. But in these new Hoka Skyward Xs, yeah. uh, yeah. the, but just in general, like it used to be two marathons a year and that was it and now we're seeing tons of athletes run three four marathons a year 
and it not be nearly as big of an issue because you can bounce back quicker. I mean, so yeah, this is like that. marathon. How, what number of marathon is this for CJ Alberts? That he's in the twenties. He said he didn't have an exact number in his head, but he's in the twenties. This is going to be Evans Chabet's 29th marathon of his yeah. career. Uh, all right, so do we want to? How do? We, which race do we want to preview first? Let's start, start with the Evans Chabet. Yes. All right. So the Evans Chabet storyline here is that yeah. he's coming in to win Boston for a third consecutive time. He won in 2022. He won in 2023. In 2023, I think this point last year, we were thinking he's the best marathoner in the world. He won the New York City Marathon the previous fall. Doesn't get a chance to run the Boston, Mar the New York City Marathon last fall because he was dealing with an Achilles injury. Now that kind of, we've, Evan Strabet is not in the final uh, five for, or final six for the Kenyan Olympic team selection. The reason behind that we found out yesterday for, when I talked to his coach is because of that Achilles injury last fall. Once they started having meetings with the athletes of who's interested in going to the Olympics. I love that. Like, who wants to go to the Olympics? Yeah. And, and it's just like, yo, he forgot to raise his hand. Evans was a little hesitant about it because he didn't know how he was going to come off of the Achilles injury. And so he wants to, he's definitely interested in running the Olympics. I asked him that point blank yesterday. He said, yes. Interested. Yeah. He's interested. Yeah. That's and step one. <laughs> yeah. Step one. You're interested in running the Boston Marathon. So if he wins a third time, that makes it case closed. You're, you, you select Evan Strabet for the Olympic team. I feel like there's just this level of disrespect. I mean, all right, the short list is stupid, right? Like, the, the whole idea it's of... It's a season of The Bachelor Bachelorette at it, this point. Yeah, it's, it feels like a reality show because if someone pops something at some point between now and then, the short list doesn't matter. No. Like, and I feel like that's what the athletes who are not on the short list are thinking, like Evans, where, oh, all right, Obviously, if I run 201 and win the Boston Marathon, I'm on the short list. I yeah. am the list now. And so it's a, it's a silly concept, but it just feels super disrespectful. Despite a little Achilles thing at this point, he's just won every time out. He's beating anyone they put forward. And then the course in Paris is hilly. It's hilly, and it's going to be hot. And it's who do you want? to be competing for your country in those conditions. Like, obviously, the guy who's proven time and time again that he can do it. It's just a deep... Kenya's got a pretty deep... <laughs> deep <laughs> tough team to make, one. yeah. <laughs> some people may say the toughest team. Some, some would say. <laughs> uh, there's... I, I talked about this on This Week in Track and Field earlier in the week, where there's also a level of politics when it comes to Athletics Kenya and their marathon team selection, where it's the dumbest thing. You have Elliot Kipchoge presumably selected for the team. He feels pretty confident he's going to be selected. Coming off the worst marathon performance of his career, but it's hard to tell, say no to the guy who's the most famous marathoner in the world, a marketing vehicle for both Nike and Athletics Kenya. So you give him his spot. What that eliminates is another potential NN running team marathoner a court because this is the way athletics Kenya they just want to appease like all the different parties so now Benson Kipruto Evans Chabet's training partner just won the Tokyo Marathon in a very fast time he's on the short list and he's presumably got a spot for that team but they won't want to give two spots to the guys from the same training group so this is where Evans also misses out it's because Benson already ran his time and all that stuff so it's like the politics behind it are so dumb it feels like just you pick would, the best team you would want teammates training in the build-up together and racing. Yeah. I mean, Connor Mance, Clayton Young do the whole thing together and it just from a, a federation standpoint, you think you'd want that? The Kenyan, if there was in theory a Kenyan Olympic trials, it'd be oh, a must watch. It'd be must watch, but instead we kind of have this game of you go there, I go here and um, I believe it was uh, Tamratola, who yeah, like was it Gabriel Gain Tamratola? Is that is that who trains York. together? And yeah, it was like let's split up so that way we're not on top of each other. No, it was Sisse Lemma, Sisse Lemma and Tamratola train together, and the idea was like let's split up so that way we're not trying to beat each other at one of the majors because the so, Ethiopian team selection exactly, is going to be the same exact thing. Yeah, so that is where like 
although the trials can be heartbreaking and it's more of an entertainment product in America, it's clear cut. Like there's not all this just sort of like subjective nature that's left a chance of like, Mary Katani was left off of the 2012 Olympic marathon team for Kenya. And it's still one of the dumbest decisions ever when she was like the best marathon. Jeffrey Mutai got left off the Kenyan team despite being the world record holder and having won multiple majors because the April before the selection, he had a bad Boston marathon. And, so, and then there's also another layer behind the scenes where it's like some of these people like, They've signed on to already run the Chicago Marathon or the Berlin Marathon, and we don't know that publicly until like they announce those fields. But that's a whole other element where, all right, you not you can run at the Olympics for free and try and win a gold medal, or you take a six-figure appearance fee to run the Berlin Marathon. What would you do? Um, six six-figure appearance fee sounds kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, instead of risking and DNFing at the Olympics. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's obviously the the Olympics. Um, it's would like be nice. it, it would be nice. It's the, it's everyone's main goal. It, it's but um, it's like you can't. Tur it's tough to, to turn down huge appearance fees. So on the men's side, it's Evans Chibet. Uh, we're rooting for Evans Chibet for a few reasons because we feel like he's slighted. Uh, I, he's very soft spoken, and I feel like we got to stand up for him. I also like his Twitter a lot. He doesn't Evans know Chibet's that we can Twitter. see what he likes, but uh, I, I, I really like Evans Chibet. And I think if we're breaking it down, it's Evans Chibet versus Athletics Kenya. Yeah. But then also versus Sisse Lemma and Gabriel Gay would probably be the big three if we're throwing out a head-to-head -head, to head graphic. Yeah. That's, is, that, is that the... All guys who... Big three? Yeah. So Sisse Lemma, who's got the fastest PR on paper, 201.48. From Valencia. Yeah. We always come back to this. It's, it's always like, back is, to Valencia. What is Valencia actually worth on a, on a, major, on a major stage? Kelvin Kiptum, rest in peace, like, proved us that like, it's for real. Yeah. Cecil Emma could, do, could back that up. I mean, he's won the major London. before. He won London in 2021. It's like he hasn't had that home run recently, but he might be, he, this could be a good opportunity to come out of a slump. To say? Yeah. Well, he's coming off, obviously, a really strong run in Valencia. But Valencia, but the, aside from that. The thing now is that he only historically has run fast, flat courses. Yeah. And so... You saw how it worked out for Kipchoge last year. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like, this is a different beast. Again, like Paris will be. But the thing that I, I feel like is interesting looking at to say and Chibet... These are not new kids on the block. No. They have been around and they have run lots of lots of marathons. And so I feel like there's a period of time there where it was all these 19, 20, 21 year olds coming out, introducing themselves to the marathon and crushing it. And now we're seeing the veterans really having their stay. And then I guess a quick word on um, Gabriel Gay, also a Valencia guy, 203 flat. He just needs to start winning. Like he's, yeah. he's run really fast. He runs well, he podiums. He, he does not have the win under his belt yet. And at some point, he's always on Chibet's shoulders late into the race. And so, like, I mean, one of these days it's going to hit. Yeah, your second last year. Yeah, so. you put yourself in enough races eventually. Is there anyone you're watching go. that's kind of on the outside of, like, you know, maybe not a 203 guy who could, this could be a breakout? Yeah, I'm excited to see um, my boy uh, Seguro Osako uh, run. He's always pretty consistent. Um, He's run 205 before, so he's got a really fast time under his belt. And I, I'm sure he's just prepared really well f for this course. Um, I know he's done specific downhill training before coming into races like this. So, and he always puts himself out there and, and, and mixes it up with the big guys. So I'm, I'm excited to see uh, Sugar run. He's now on the Olympic team. It's official. It's official, I think, at this point, where it was like, I mean, that's a whole nother, that's a cooler reality show than the Athletics Kenya one, where in Japan, it's like, all right, we hold the trials, third place, here's the deadline, here's a couple races, someone could knock you off. And I, I thought that was great. And I like Osaka that system. ran fast enough that, like, no one knocked him off. And so uh, he's, he's definitely someone who I think, given he's got, he's racking up experience against these major fields, that this could be a breakthrough. Albert Career. Yeah, New York City Marathon. Talk champion. about a guy who's always there. Yeah. And we discount him because we don't think he can run that fast of a 400. I, <laughs> I, uh, He's got I no chatted wheels. with him yesterday, and, and like, 
I, I said, how are you feeling? He says, oh, I've been better. And I was like, what does that mean? I was like, you hurt? He goes, no. I was like, do you have I'm a good, so thirsty. Do you have a good build up? Because yeah. And I was like, interesting. Very, it's sad. very short interview. Yeah. Because I was like, uh, he wasn't showing his cards too much. I said, it was like, you like not a championship style races with no pacemakers. And he goes, yeah. I mean, like, and I was like, but you don't have like one of the fastest times on paper. He's like, and that's fine. So. I, I, someone to watch. It's rare moments that someone doesn't say they're in the best shape of their life. Rare. I like, I, I like that. That's kind of why, like, I was taken aback. Because it, it was sort of like, whoa. I was like, usually I come here and everyone lies to my face, being like, "This is the best build up I've ever had in my life." I actually, I like that strategy. To it's it's you're just going I didn't even and you say the interview because I was like, oh, <laughs> he's not fit. I think it's fun. It's better. It's like you tell everyone you're not fit and then go out there and over There's over deliver. There's nothing to gain. <laughs> talking a big game. Honestly, and that's, that's yeah. an issue in like the promotion of track and field in general. You don't get any bonus points. And look, no one's changing their strategy based off of watching a Zuhair Talby workout on YouTube. Yeah. But it was enough to convince Chris that he's going to win. Did it was. <laughs> uh, so on the subject of dark horses, and you spoiled my pick for later. <laughs> nice, Kyle. I, well, if you watched Chris's interview that we posted to YouTube with him from the press conference. I, le I went in. So the, I came in hot. Eric, that the opening is legitimately. So you're going to win, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he's taken aback. And Chris's like, no, I think you could win. Like, yeah, you're like going to win, right? I asked him. I was like, have you? <laughs> Do you think you could win? And it's like, have, could you see yourself winning? Like, I asked it in a variety of different ways. Because I, I like, you know, us Houston Marathon alums, like, we, we, we stick together. <laughs> and he had a good one. You both went sub three there this year. He did bring up the fact, he was like, you know, we ran, when we ran Houston, and I was like, yeah, we ran Houston. Like, we is doing yeah. a lot of work there <laughs> together. Uh, because we were in an hour apart, almost. Um, but, you know, I just kind of... I think this is only his fourth marathon of his career. He's only had one bad one, which is New York, I think, last fall. But really good strowing in Houston. Uh, he ran here last year. I think this could be it for him. And he had a, a great showing at the NYC half. I was sold. I opened up by telling him, I was like, the BAA is disrespecting you by putting you this far back <laughs> in, the, in the conference room because you're going to win on, on Monday. And he goes, I'm going to win on Monday? I'm, you're like, you say it again. <laughs> like, say say it. it with your yeah. chest. Yeah. Zuhair, you're going to win. Yeah. Uh, I just love his origin story. In my mind, is always the trials of miles in Austin during 2020, yes. which Chris and I are forced to commentate a 30-minute 10K in which he totally broke open the field surprised everyone and it was it was just we didn't we did our notes and our preparation beforehand we didn't prepare to talk about the 25th guy from the NAIA school we had to find a way to kill 27 <laughs> minutes and like we're literally just googling and reporting our research live <laughs> in real time reading wikipedia in a sense which is like at, the, at that point he didn't have anything and so yeah i mean like it's just so it's really cool to see how he's blossomed into just be without, you know, partaking in the NCAA. It's the NAIA. Something that is also interesting about Zuhair is, you know, he was fasting during Ramadan. Yes. And so it's, it, it's you know, he's coming off a, a block in which he had to overcome. And obviously at this point in his life and career, that's something he's used to. But it's interesting because, you know, that's most marathoners maybe do one or two runs depleted during their training block yeah. and he likely had more than that yeah so i mean it's been a couple days now since the end um and i think it should be fine so uh not necessarily dark horse pick anymore because of the amount of hype you're, you're giving them but you know i think from an american perspective here we've got cj albertson back he and doesn't know what he's going to do on Monday. I feel like he's just going to run down the hill faster than he everyone else. He says he else. can't run 62 for the first half this year without, like, realizing that, like, oh, the second half's going to hurt. So, like, he's hoping that people play it a little bit more conservative. And I, I said to him, I was like, you know, you're usually the guy who, like, people, like, who takes it. It didn't seem like he's going to do that. Again, at these press conferences, everyone's playing poker and... It's, I'm not going to be shocked if C.J. Albertson's like the guy up in the front. I, I want to like retroactively take take the L 
from the trials because in our previous year of the trials i said like i don't think cj has a shot of making this team yeah. and then granted he didn't make it but seconds. i i underrated his chances and i think had he run that race just a little bit differently yeah that maybe it was there for him he seems to have gotten over it emotionally really well he said uh, you know i, I have yeah. two kids i i teach i coach like i've got a lot going on and he does seem like the type of runner who is always just looking to the next thing and get over it quite quickly. Yeah. And so he, guess, he is a guy who 10 weeks ago, we know he was fit. I believe that he probably carried that over. I don't think he took yeah, two weeks I, off. I think the, the CJ, it seemed like probably walked away from the trials. Really, he, he should have, if he runs that race differently, he makes the team. Um, it seemed like he was coming on so strong at the end of that race. Um, and he just left it a little bit short. So, but he, I mean, what, what number of marathon is this for on the year? This is first. Well, I mean, he ran. For the last 12 months? Yeah, he, he ran the trials. Like probably five, did, I think. Yeah. Five or six. Um, I, I think, he, I, I mean, he's a really tough runner. I, I think this is a, a course that probably favor, favors him. Um, if he can stay a little bit more composed in the first half and not go out crazy hard, I, I, think, I think he'll have a great day. Then we got the guy who finished right at, in front of him at the trials, Elkana Kabet, who I have never heard someone handle for it. Actually, you know what? Because Jess was also this way on the women's side. Normally, like, fourth place is like yeah, this hard The two most graceful breaking. fourth place finishers in the history of the U.S. trials track. My God, marathon. did they handle it well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, El 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 Elkana is, uh, he's been, he went back to training in, in Colorado Springs at another solid block. He, he's so cool because like he was just uh, immediately after Orlando was already talking about 2028 yeah. and it's like, dude, you're going to be 44, but it's like, he doesn't care. Like it, the, the shoes, the training and all that stuff, the advances that have been made, like he's got more running in him. Something that I liked about Elkana's move too, is he wants to get that top five finished. Oh, smart. To help out Lenny. I didn't even give thought to that. Yeah. So Lenny Courier, he's probably okay to get in right now based off the descending order ranking list. You know, it's not official, but if an American gets top five, then he's good. And yeah, I Elkana forgot about that. Elkana wants to help his boy out and get that top five for him to, to take the weight off of having to check the road to Paris updates every single morning. <laughs> Man, top five is looking pretty tough when there's, what, nearly 10 guys who have run under 206. But yeah. again, throw time out the window. It's Boston. Yeah, I think People top five would, will be a tough. It's, it's definitely doable. I think top five, though, would be is it's going to take a huge day. If you run for top five, though, as opposed to running to win, that's when you can finish. Yes, yeah, for fifth. sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, any other Americans? I mean, Sam Chalanga didn't have the trials he wanted. Yeah. But it, we had heard such good things about his fitness in the lead up. Uh, yeah, he I said, saw someone tweet Sam Chalanga, and I, I believe, I, I don't know who tweeted it. That was the whole tweet? That was the whole, Sam Chalanga. Tons of retweets got to <laughs> blew up. No, I, I mean, he could, he, uh, he, because he trains with that in Utah, right? With, he was for, with, with that rep for the, group for, before the young. yeah before the trials, but not this time around. He's just had bad luck. Uh, he, he was hurt, I think, and sick going into Houston, uh, and then I think this time around, same, not a perfect training block, but uh, so it's been illness and injury two times that have kind of gotten him before big races. Just bad luck. All right, so should we hop over to the women's? Because, Chris, you said to me before we started rolling, this is the Helen O'Beary show. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I take Dathan's word for it when he says that she's in the best marathoning shape of her career. She won Boston last year, won New York. Like, this is just the type of the world cross-country champion. Like, she's got the background. Like, this is a course made for her. I think, like, the level of competition around her is maybe not as tough as it was last year. I don't think this field is as like tough as last November's New York City Marathon field when he's just got uh, Gide on her shoulder. Sharon Lochetti is here, which that that's a good uh, That's the matchup. short list. So I think right now, looking at the short list for Kenya, 
despite having a modest personal best, Helen O'Beary should be on that team. If she's left off, that is crazy. But she does need to come in and put up a good race. A, a, she's got to get a double. You I know? said. I said to. I asked her. I was like, "Do you do you think you have to win to be selected, or can you get away with you know finishing in the top three? And she laughed. Because she's like, obviously, I'm going to run to win is the answer there. But if Sharon beats her, who I would currently have on the outside yeah. of that short list. Does that jump her over? Mm. If you just beat someone in the spring in the head-to-head, -head, it's really... I mean, they could obviously both be on yeah. that team. But I think right now, Sharon's on the outside looking in. She is someone who needs to win she this needs race. To, yeah, she needs to win this race. Yeah. Maybe a, a tight finish for second. David sitting next to me. David left her out of the preview, and we, just, we, yeah. we got some emails about it. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> Control F. Sharon Lucchetti, no results nope. found. David Melly's not on this show for a reason. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's in the penalty box. Yeah, he's in the penalty box. Which he's is also, like he, he must not know racing. anything. Yeah, yeah. He's also racing on Monday, so good luck to David. Um, yeah, I am pretty firm in my belief that I think if Helen O'Beary. The funniest thing about her training for this thing is that the thing that she's most focused on a year ago coming into this race was can she keep the fluids down because she struggled with that. This time around is can she reach for the bottles correctly? Because we all know mm. how Helen O'Beary runs. All arms. I mean, I, 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 Mac is like the running form impressionist and he could do a Helen O'Beary impression. Uh, she can knock bottles off the table if it's if it's not going well. So she's been training in practice in case she gets assigned bottle number two, bottle number four, bottle number one. I said, you're going to be bottle number one. Like, you're the defending champ. You usually get bib number one. But she was, even yesterday was like, I don't know. And so, like, yeah, that's her biggest concern right now is can I pick the bottles off the table? And if that's your biggest concern, then I'm, like, not that worried. I've got so many more concerns in yeah. life than... Will Helen be able to pick up the bottles? She'll be able to do it. Yeah. She'll be right. But the, the thing that is interesting with Helen is obviously that she wins races, and that's big. Yeah. But we do have, you know, the top seeds. We have a couple women who've run 217 in this who don't have the same accolades. And this is now the opportunity for Tadu Tashomi, who's run 217.36. She's at the top of every list here. But... You know, she hasn't won recently. I think this is five straight marathons that she hasn't won. Her personal best is from Valencia, obviously. Yeah. And so for her, this is a really big moment to come in and show that she can get it done on the stage. Yeah. Uh, she's someone who a year ago was having trouble even getting, or two years ago, I think, having trouble getting into races uh, because, like, no one had really known who she was. So, like, she's someone I throw into that dark horse category because, like, what we learned last year is they get... The fast PRs on paper don't always translate to, like, you're going to do well on this course. Kipchoge, case in point. Yeah. So my, my, the person that I'm really watching here to potentially contend with Helen that we haven't discussed yet is Workinash Odessa. Okay. Explain. Because there's so much consistency there at this point. So Workinash, you know, she won Osaka, but in her last five marathons, 2.19.39 is her average time. So you just know that she's going to bring something that's going to be competitive. And I, I think for a lot of athletes, it's like you don't necessarily need to do something heroic that you've never done before. You just have to put together your best race on a day in which, you know, there's no longer pacers and it might get a little warm at the end of the race. And just how do you deal with all those external factors? And so the ability to always be consistently showing up, it's like you know that at 22 miles, if there's a pack, she should be there. Yeah, I mean, I certainly wouldn't bet, you know, Helen O'Beary, obviously, I think is the, is the favorite. Yeah. Um, defending champ, has won the big races. If, you know, if Dathan says she's fit um, and it's the best block of, you know, I'm sure she's crazy fit. Um, I got my eye on uh, Gebra Merriam. Um, if they're, got the time. Is, is she the second fastest yeah. coming in? So, right, second fastest coming in. And she's got Boston experience. Uh, you know, I, what was she? I, I, eighth last? Was, what was she last year? Because, um, but she's got the time, got experience, so um, she could be someone to, to pull off the upset. Someone that... And third at Valencia. 
the whispers are that they're very, very fit is Sinbir Teferi. Yeah. See, like, Sinbir Teferi is interesting to me because well, she uh, uh, crushes <laughs> on, uh, the, anything but the marathon. And she has a good PR, but, like, hasn't hit a home run yet at the, on the major stage. World record holder in the 5K. Yeah. That's road 5K, 1429. Um, Intel is that she's very fit, as would be indicated by the 64-minute half she just ran in February. So, look, 64 and a half, pretty good. But, yeah, obviously extending up to the marathon is going to be difficult, but it's not like she hasn't done it before. She's run 219 in Berlin. Yeah. So, if I'm hearing that she's fit and knowing what she's accomplished before – like, assuming that's a relative thing, then, you know, she's, she's going to be in the conversation. So sources. Sources say fitness. Fitness. Uh, you get, I mean, there's, to, to Eric's point about just experience on this course, you've got Mary Ngugi Cooper uh, from Kenya, who's run 220, has come, been on the podium here before, just a staple of coming to this race year in, year out, has run, like, the other BA races, so like the half. Uh, Edna Kiplagat, Des Linden, like those. We're are always gonna who, count out Edna Kiplagat. I know it's crazy. We'll just be, we'll look at her birth certificate and be like, "There's no way, she can't, she doesn't have another the one." And she's wonder. always there. So, uh, I think something also that's just interesting is the number of defending champions in this field. That's a big thing here in, in at Boston. Is just sort of like it honestly feels like they have. Second to the influencers, if you win Boston, you've got an assured spot at uh, the Boston Marathon. Just for I life. mean, for I, life. yeah, I think if you win the Boston Marathon, absolutely should be able to. That, that's an for automatic, life. yeah, for life. Sure. Yeah, I think like Meb didn't have a problem getting a bib this year, despite not having a BQ. <laughs> the defending champion that we forgot about. That I don't think we're going to forget about anymore is Caroline Rotich, Rotich yeah. 2015. I remember the trials, you know, it had been a little while since she really knocked one out of the park. So she wasn't someone on the top of her mind, I think, for a lot of people didn't realize that she was even running for America. Yeah, and we, then all of a sudden, late in the trials. In the middle of the race, yeah. She's there. She ends up finishing sixth. I, I feel like returning to Boston somewhere where she's obviously had the good vibes now bring the fitness that she has refound. You know, again, an opportunity for one of the Americans who just missed out on making the team to come in. Uh, I, I don't know. I just feel like she's someone that was so overlooked in the lead into the race, the trials, and almost was the biggest disruptor to everyone's plans. 100%. And I think, like, that if we switch gears here, then the battle for top American is interesting. If Emma Bates is in the shape of her life, even coming off of that injury, which, like, ends up being a blessing in disguise because it just kind of extended your ability to recover from the injury, get some proper training in, that if Emma's coming in similar to last year's form, she finished top five, all right, you throw her versus Carolyn and Rotich, I think that's a great battle. Sarah Hall, Jenny Simpson looking to rebound too. Yeah. How do you view it? I mean, yeah, Emma Bates is obviously a huge question mark. Um, I'm excited to see Sarah Hall. I think she is someone who... Was, is disappointed from the trials. So I think Sarah Hall and Emma Bates are probably the going to be battling it out for, for Top American. I, I think Emma Bates um, is probably probably the favorite, you know, coming off yeah. the injury, but I, I think Emma Bates will, is probably the favorite for Top American. In other country selection systems, if Emma came out here and knocked it out of the park, there would be an opportunity for her to get in. And I feel like if she does have a, a top five finish in her and runs really well, there's going to be a part of us that is kind of wishing, damn, I wish that we could slide hey, Emma in because a year ago, everyone would have had her in their top three to make the team. You start building the case for LA. Like, start that resume padding tomorrow or on Monday. And, like, maybe... We decide. Uh, actually, you know what? If you think about it, if there is no Olympic trials in 2028, which like there is what maybe a small percent chance of that happening, because no city wants to take the financial burden of that, and we move to a selector system, then like start building the case now, Emma. You go, girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, let's move to the kitchen. I don't know system. if 2024. No, no, it's not going to happen for 2024. Much. But um, no, I mean, it, I just think it's like an interesting human element of it, of like you just had this huge heartbreaking thing. It's like, how do you back bounce back from that? And you do have to push it down. And I feel like she is saying all the right things of yeah. there's bigger things than the Olympics out there. And, you know, it's true. Uh, the Boston Marathon, probably right up there. So uh, I, I feel like everyone's rooting for her more than they would have even previous to uh, injury. She was biking 24 hours a week, six days a week, um, cross-training like an animal. 24 hours a day? 24 hours a day? I'm like, that's too much biking. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. A, she must be exhausted. She must be exhausted. Gotta sleep. Yeah, it's that team boss mentality. The cross-training... Insane. They're machines when it comes to that. Yeah. All right, picks. Where are we starting? All right, let's give our picks for the men's race. We're not going all chalk. Evans Shabet, Evans Shabet, Evans Shabet. But you're sticking with your boy. Who's my boy? Evans Shabet. The Achilles has me nervous. Yeah. I see him as winning or not finishing. Um, if he doesn't finish, that makes it so much easier for the Kenyan That's selectors. also what you said about Galen at the trials. <laughs> yeah. And he finished. He did finish, yeah. yeah. He didn't win. All right, he might finish. I think I jumped on you. I think yeah. I said the same thing, too. I, yeah. you, you had me going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, like, really convincing argument. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm rooting for Evan Strabet. Sisse Lemma, just, we know he was so fit yeah. the last time out. So if I had a bet... Uh, Evans Chabet. <laughs> Evans Chabet, all right. I'm going to go uh, Gabriel Gay. Yeah? Um, really fast. I'd, lo I'd love to see um, Evans Chabet three-peat. But, yeah, I mean, coming off a serious injury, who knows necessarily this, the state he's in right now health-wise. Gabriel Gay has been so close. I like that. Yeah. I'm sticking with Zuhair Talbot. Zuhair yeah. Talbot. There we go. Out of my chest. Uh, someone in the YouTube chat said... I think Talby's going to crack top three. I agree, because he's going to win it all. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a big moment for him. And then, like, in addition to that, he, he mentioned to me he's already kind of been selected for, like, the Moroccan Olympic team. He's just waiting for them to officially write it down. Sweet story there in terms of just, like, redemption. He was at the Olympics in 21, and then I pulled out yeah, from under him. Totally because, forgot. He yeah. was literally there at the, the Olympics. Village, but then because he didn't have enough drug tests before that and, like, the Moroccan Athletics Federation kind of fumbled it. The it issue is the Moroccan Federation was on, like, the watch list yeah. or something, and therefore their athletes needed to be tested a certain amount of times. Zuhair, at the start of the year, was, was it, not no as fast as they realized he would be, and he was training in the U.S. and kind of, like, just ran out of time to get a number of tests in, and therefore wasn't allowed to compete. So let's get him back there. Make it up to him. Yeah. So I, I think those are our picks for the men's race drop them in the youtube chat hit us up on instagram twitter we want to hear your guys's picks all right women's side it's helen o'beary helen all right i'm sweep i'm giving my dark horse you're gonna give it to them sirenesh yurga for the win yeah <laughs> wow yeah. <laughs> just so i seem like a genius okay if Explain. it works out uh I mean, Sierra Nash, 23 years old. Last year, she won Dubai and Shanghai in 221. Uh, or no, sorry. She won Shanghai. She was third in Dubai. But in 2022, she won Lagos, Madrid, and I am not going to pronounce it. it Lubana? It, there's something in Slovenia that she won. Um, I just, I, I take people who win a lot. And that's so, a good, that's safe. Helen yeah. wins a people lot, People who too. win a lot. People who win a lot. I know, well, but you you guys both took Helen. That's yeah. You know, yeah, no, that would be different. No, for sure. All right, we want to hear your women's picks. Drop them in the YouTube chat. Hit us up on social media. Monday, marathon Monday, almost upon us. We hope you guys enjoyed the preview show. We got another special episode of the podcast coming tomorrow. Um, and we're going to be streaming it live onto YouTube. So for the people want to know what's coming, what's coming up, we're going to post up here. And we're going to have just, it's like blind speed dating. We don't know who the guests are going to be. We just put out an open call and said, like, hey, be a guest on the City Smack podcast. Share your Boston Marathon story. 
We're just going to hear whoever comes by. I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get some inspirational stories, some crazy stories. The like if Helen O'Beary came by. If Helen O'Beary stops by and is like, yeah, I won this thing. Oh, tell us, tell us about that. It's going to be fun to have them introduce themselves, where they're from. So, you know, I think that's the beauty of Marathon Weekend is just you get people from all walks of life, all parts of the world to come together. And, and it's going to be I, I, something, I don't know if you can tell listening to this, there's a lot of people in the room here in the yeah. Hoka booth Testing out the shoes. The Skyward X comes out soon. I think Eric's got a pair on right now. There's that shoe that's behind us. I've got, I've got it on. The They're awesome. Super Trainer, 48 millimeters of foam. So if you are one yeah, of these guys, single thick. guys on the dating apps who lies about his height, the Hoka Skyward X is the shoe for you for that first date so that you know you're not fooling them. You're just gonna be wearing them at all the dates. I hope they come out with more colors. If you lie about your height by 48 millimeters, it is the perfect shoe. Yeah. So if you're on the dating apps and are lying, get that extra inch or two. <laughs> big moves, big dates coming up. Skyward X from Hope. My knee has been, if you follow me on Strava, you know that my knee has been an ongoing issue this month and I refuse to stop running. I just, I can handle the pain for 20 to 30 minutes each day. Got the shoes yesterday. Best two runs I've had in five, six weeks in the shoes. Really? So, I don't know. Like, maybe coincidence. Maybe there's something to it. But my knee has felt good the last two days. And I chalk it up to Skyward X. And then Eric's making a comeback. So, like, things are looking up. Things are looking up. <laughs> All right. That does it for our previous show. Thanks for tuning in on YouTube. Thanks for listening on the podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow for some... Blind speed dating. Let's do it. Let's do it. I I'm love stoked. marathons. Love Marathon Monday.